twin scroll versus single scroll, uh, twin scroll manifold designed for twin scroll setups versus a manifold that's not. Benefits, problems, is it still worth it? Let's find out. <laughs> Welcome back, another YouTube video. This is the first of 2021, and I uh, hope you guys had an awesome Christmas and New Year. I know it's almost the end of January, but compliments of the season to everybody nonetheless. One of my uh, loyal subscribers have asked me to please cover twin scroll housings, the benefits, just to open up the subject, and that's what I'm going to do here today. Now, you get twin scroll housings and you get twin scroll designed manifolds that are actually designed with pulse separation to get the best and the most out of your twin scroll turbine housing. Now, let's say for example, you have a twin scroll manifold. However, you're using a single scroll turbine housing. Is it still beneficial? Will you see a difference as opposed to running a normal manifold where all the runners go into one open cavity through a collector into a single scroll turbine housing as opposed to having a tuned port manifold where you have on a four cylinder engine one and four, three and two cylinders separated from one another so that there's no pulse interruption and then feeding into a single scroll housing. Are there any benefits? Let's go into that. First I want to show you if you haven't already know, haven't already seen what a twin scroll housing looks like, I'd like to show you some close-ups of twin scroll housings, and I'm going to re refresh your memory on what the single scroll turbine housings look like, and I'm also going to show you the cutout again, just to give you an idea of what we're talking about. And with this cutout, I'll basically just explain what a twin scroll housing is, so you get a better picture of what it actually looks like inside, uh, because I haven't actually gone and cross section one. Um, I'll do that in another video, but for this video, let's basically get some close-ups on what these twin scroll housings look like, and uh, I'll compare them to the, the, the cross-section single scroll and obviously complete single scroll housings. Okay guys, so we've got a twin scroll turbine housing here. Yes, this is a T3 footprint or flange face, which is the inlet to the turbine housing. And if you have a look, you've basically got a divider, which cuts a normal single scroll single scroll opening this is a t25 or gt25 gt28 flange face it's slightly smaller than the t3 don't worry about that that's your single scroll or single opening this is a twin scroll or double volute opening this divider is what basically we call a twin scroll because this divider separates these two scrolls from one another but this divider doesn't just enter into the volute a certain section and then stop. This divider travels throughout the entire circumference of the turbine housing separating those two scrolls into two separate volutes. That's what we refer to as a volute. Now picture a plate, a steel plate being put on top over here and another volute like this being put on top of that. You have two separate volutes. Now I'd like to show you the inside of the turbine housing where you'll actually see that divider traveling throughout the entire circumference of the volute. What I'm referring to as the divider is this little piece over there. That divider, as I turn the housing, you'll see travels along the entire volute of the housing. It travels all the way around until you get to what you guys already know as the tongue that there, I don't know if you can see that, that there is the tongue, and it is divided all the way to the tongue. So what you actually have in, a, in essence are two completely separate volutes traveling next to each other. That is what a twin scroll housing is, and that is what it looks like. That's basically just a quick show and tell on what the turbine housing looks like with the twin scroll or the divider that separates the two volutes into two separate turbine housings just cast as one piece. Now, why would you want to do that? And I'm going to use a four cylinder engine purely because of the fact that it's easier to remember the firing order, which is one, 
three, four, two. So cylinder one fires first, then three, then four, then two. Now, what you're basically doing is if you have a manifold where you have four runners coming into a single collector, every time you have a firing, a, a, a cylinder fire or an ignition event, you basically have a pulse that is an energy pulse, fuel that gets burned, that basically follows through whichever port, whichever runner on that manifold um, has been fired. So you'll have cylinder one, then cylinder three, then cylinder four, then cylinder two. And those pulses, unless they are separated all the way into the volute of the turbine housing, will actually cause interruptions and they'll actually interfere with one another. So what we're basically trying to do with a twin scroll setup is you can't have a turbocharger with four scrolls. It's going to be far too complicated to, to manufacture and it's going to be far too expensive to manufacture. It is possible and it will probably be easier to 3D print as opposed to cost, but that's the reason we use a twin scroll setup. It's just that much easier, cheaper, and is obviously a, a, a proven, proven technology. It's been done a million, million times on many applications before. So what you're basically doing is you're trying to separate those pulses so that they don't interfere with one another. So as the pulse basically expands through that manifold, it will obviously start messing around and causing uh, reverberations with all the other pulses as and when they occur. So what we want to do is separate them all the way down that manifold runner and then try and keep them uninterrupted and as smooth as possible and as accurate, if that's a, the correct word to use, as possible through the actual turbine housing so that you get as much of the energy instead of having being interrupted or wasted exerted into the actual turbine and you use as much of that energy as possible to actually spool the turbine inside of the rotating assembly. So I want to move on to the board now quickly and then I'm going to show you what I actually mean just with a little drawing quickly and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to throw a curveball at you. Okay guys, so I've just drawn up a, a quick tuned port manifold for you, cylinders 1 and 3, 4 and 2. Yes, they're not in the right order, I've just separated them just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So red is cylinders 1 and 3, 4 and 2 are blue, not to say that 4 and 2 are cooler, I've just changed the color just to show you the separation between them. So. What we want to basically do is we want to have pulse separation as between all of the cylinders and what we want to do is try and have a firing order of one and three going down the same leg into one section of the volute and two and four going into the other section of the volute so we want to separate them by the manifold design now this is not what the manifold will look like physically this is just a drawing to depict where the actual pulses will go so one and three Cylinders, the, 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 the firing order is one, three, four, two. So you'll have one and three keeping those pulses separated into one section of the volute directly focused onto the inducer blades of the turbine and four and two. Now, what does that do? That basically gives you better linear response. And that's ideally what you want in a streetcar that runs a larger turbocharger. Now, this is a tuned port manifold together with a twin scroll housing. Now, what about a combination where you have a tuned port manifold, but you use a turbine housing like this? You will still see a benefit, not as much as a twin scroll housing, but you will still see a benefit because of the pulse separation in the design of the manifold. So if you already have a vehicle that you're now upgrading a turbocharger to, or you've bought a car and it's got some Chinese paperweight piece of junk on it that you want to throw off and put a, a decent turbo on, but the turbo you've chosen doesn't come with a twin scroll option on the turbine side, however it has a tuned port manifold, you can still use it and see a benefit because the pulses have been separated through the manifold, even though they expand into an open scroll housing, you will still see a benefit. It's not going to be as much as a twin scroll setup, but you will still see a benefit. Now, what I want to do is talk about another turbine housing which is going to basically throw a cat amongst the pigeons. What we're basically going to talk about now is two different ways to control a twin scroll turbine housing. And the design of the additional component is there to assist you with further boost response. Now, I'm going to paint a picture. I'm going to give you a hypothetical example. We're running an engine, four cylinder, six cylinder, whatever the case is, and we're running a massive turbo on this thing. We want to try and produce 1,500 horsepower out of a four cylinder engine. The engine's capacity is, let's say, two and a half liter. And we need to obviously run a massive turbo, but the two and a half liter engine cannot rev high enough 
to generate enough energy out the exhaust port to spool the size turbo we need to be able to make that power. So we decide to go with the twin scroll manifold. However, the twin scroll, even though it's twin scroll, the, the smallest AR rating that will allow us to achieve the 1500 horsepower mark is still going to be too laggy. What do we do then? So here's an idea for you guys. It's been done many times and it's been done 15 years ago already. What you do is you will take, this is one of two things. You will take your twin scroll flange and you machine yourself a spacer. It'll probably be about two and a half inches high. It'll be a solid piece of steel with the same cutouts for the two volutes and obviously your bolts. So this will be a spacer which will, you will then install a butterfly valve in one of the ports and you'll actually block that port off and on the outside of this little adapter plate you'll run a small little actuator with a half a bar spring 0.5 bar 7 psi spring pressure inside and what the idea is is to run on only half of the turbine housing until you get to a certain boost pressure and then that butterfly valve will open allowing all of those gases to flow into the remaining AR of the turbine housing because the turbine is already spooled up you will be able to then obviously add additional energy through the second port of your volute and obviously you'll be a, you, you'll you should get much better boost response so that has been done before it works really really well you can control it with an N75 valve or a solenoid valve uh, via a PWM signal on your ECU etc etc starting to get technical that's for another video but that's an idea or you can run a turbine housing like this good old Mitsubishi these guys are brilliant this is the most underrated turbo on the market but they have got some really really great ideas I'm sure you can see what I'm talking about also a twin scroll this is a T4 flange face with a divider it runs along the entire volute section so what you're looking at here is a small AR really small AR volute and a large AR volute in one turbine housing now the control mechanism which basically works on this is it is not included in this uh, this picture it's irrelevant for now but this is just a great idea that I'd like to share with you guys running a twin variable AR scroll housing to assist you in spool up where you're running an oversized turbocharger trying to make massive horsepower great idea isn't it tiny little volute much larger volute you're gonna still feed via the same tongue area inside of that turbine housing you're gonna feed the same turbine inducer blade however it's gonna be fed from a high pressure volute as well as a lower pressure volute the high pressure gases are separated through the divider from the lower pressure gases however they still feed the same turbine inducer that is going to make for a brilliant response in a large turbocharger setup okay guys so that's pretty much an opening video to open the subject once again this is quite a long in-depth topic so i don't like to go into too much detail in the beginning i'd leave it to you guys if there's questions and uh, interaction from you guys in the comment section below i'll obviously answer whatever questions make up more videos for you guys to do whatever explanations you guys need but i hope you guys enjoyed that i love personally this mitsubishi design housing we're busy with one of our own which is going to be uh, set up for one of the six cylinder engines uh, which are quite popular in our country and uh, yeah look out for that but i hope you guys enjoyed this remember to like and subscribe catch you next time